Today's lesson is let's have some soup. Hi, everybody. I'm Roger, and I'm Helen. And today we are preparing for a Thanksgiving feast, and in our conversation, they're talking about preparing some soup. Which can be a tasty part of a delicious meal. Soup is usually eaten with a spoon. It's very liquidy. It's in a liquid form usually, and of course, in English we say we eat soup, and in Chinese you say you drink soup. There is an important difference there. Yes, and soup features very often in meals during the fall or winter months when it feels. A little bit colder, and you want something warm or hot to eat, and soup is great for that because it's usually very nutritious. It contains a lot of ingredients, and it reflects the seasons. Because based on what's available in the season, that's what you put in the soup. Okay, so let's find out what this is all about. We've got some friends, Ruby and Ethan, and they are preparing for a Thanksgiving feast. Let's listen to their conversation now. Let's have some soup. Preparing for a Thanksgiving feast, Ruby and Ethan, two international students, have been put in charge of planning the Thanksgiving dinner for their dormitory, and are talking about options for the menu. So the big Thanksgiving dinner is coming up soon. Any ideas for the menu? Yeah, back home in Canada, my mom used to make this amazing pumpkin soup for Thanksgiving. It's an old family recipe, and it always brings back warm memories. Oh, pumpkin soup sounds perfect. It's such a great autumn ingredient, and I love the sentiment of using a family recipe. After all, Thanksgiving is all about appreciating what we have and sharing with others. Exactly. I'm glad you like the idea. In that case, we just need to make sure we can get all the right spices and such. I can head to the market bright and early tomorrow. To pick out the best pumpkins. Okay, I'll handle the spices and other ingredients so that we can be sure to do justice to your mom's recipe. Sounds like a plan. With any luck, we'll make it a memorable Thanksgiving dinner for everyone in the dorm. I can't wait to see everyone enjoy the soup and whatever else we end up making. Dormitory. 它的意思是学生宿舍。例如 ，Many students prefer living in the dormitory because it's cheaper than renting an apartment. 许多学生偏好住在学生宿舍，因为它比租房还便宜。又或者说 ，According to school policy, guests cannot stay overnight in student dormitories. 根据学校的规定，访客不能在学生宿舍待过夜。再来，我们看到名词 recipe。它的意思是食谱或是烹饪配方。例如 ，I've written down all of my favorite recipes in this notebook. 我已经将所有我最喜欢的食谱写在这本笔记本里。又或者说 ，The cake is made from my great grandmother's recipe. 这蛋糕是按照我曾祖母的食谱所做的。下一个我们看到单字 sentiment， 它是形容词，指的是对人事物的情绪、感觉，但也可以是感伤的意思。例如 ，When it comes to Christmas, my sentiments are quite different from my family's. 当谈到圣诞节时，我的感觉与我的家人们截然不同。又或者说 ，Celia doesn't like people who wear fur, and she's not afraid of voicing her sentiments. Celia 不喜欢穿皮草的人，而且她并不害怕说出自己的感觉。So the title of the first dialogue is preparing for a Thanksgiving feast, and Ruby and Ethan, two international students, have been put in charge of planning the Thanksgiving dinner for their dormitory and are talking about options for the menu. So we know that Ruby and Ethan are students; they are international students, and that they are living in the same dormitory. A dormitory is a building in a college or a university. Usually, it could also be another kind of school. School where students live. They live there, and then they take classes. So Ruby and Ethan live in the same dormitory, and they have been put in charge of planning the Thanksgiving dinner. When you're put in charge of something, it means you have been given the responsibility for doing something. 
Right, so they need to plan for the Thanksgiving dinner, and it's going to be for their dormitory. They're going to invite all the other residents of the dormitory to this particular celebration, to this feast, and of course they need to talk about some options for the menu. Just what are we going to cook for this Thanksgiving dinner? Well, Ruby begins the conversation. She says, "So the big Thanksgiving dinner is coming up soon." Any ideas for the menu? So again, Thanksgiving is kind of like a harvest festival in the United States. It takes place on the fourth Thursday of November, which just happens to be tomorrow, on the twenty-third of November. And they better work fast here because they've only got one day to prepare. But、uh, yes, indeed, Ruby is asking for some suggestions. Do you have any ideas for the menu? Do you have any ideas of what to cook? And Ethan replies, "Yeah, back home in Canada, my mom used to make this amazing pumpkin soup for Thanksgiving. It's an old family recipe, and it always brings back warm memories. So we know that Ethan is from Canada. He is Canadian, and he is suggesting a particular recipe for pumpkin soup that his mother used to make." Exactly, and remember, the Canadian Thanksgiving is different to the American one. I believe the Canadian Thanksgiving is on the second Monday of October, so they would have already celebrated this in Canada. But still, Ethan is willing to celebrate the American one, which occurs tomorrow. And his mom has a recipe for some amazing pumpkin soup for Thanksgiving. That is a traditional dish for Thanksgiving. I don't think I ever had pumpkin soup when I was a kid at home. We always had pumpkin pie, but of course, lots of people prepare pumpkin soup for Thanksgiving as well. And、uh, he goes on to say, "It's an old family recipe, and it always brings back warm memories. A recipe, of course, is a set of instructions on how to prepare a certain dish. It will tell you what the ingredients should be, and how you should prepare them, and how you should cook them, and how you should serve them." Yes, I used to have a big collection of recipe books, books that teach you how to prepare dishes from different countries. But now, usually, I look online for recipes if I want to prepare a particular type of dish. So Ruby replies to Ethan, "Oh, pumpkin soup sounds perfect." It's such a great autumn ingredient, and I love the sentiment of using a family recipe. So Ruby really likes the idea of making pumpkin soup, particularly because pumpkin is an autumn ingredient. It's associated with autumn because people make pumpkin pie, they make pumpkin soup, and they make a lot of other dishes with pumpkin that is harvested during the autumn season. And she also loves the sentiment of using a family recipe. Right. Remember pumpkin. Is a very large vegetable, so of course you're not going to say, "I love eating pumpkins." That means you eat lots of those big pieces of fruit. There, no one really does that. We always eat just parts of the pumpkin, so we consider pumpkin to be non-count when we're talking about food. And so here we're talking about pumpkin soup. It sounds perfect. It's a great autumn ingredient, and of course. She loves the sentiment of using a family recipe. Sentiment here just means the feeling of something, the general attitude that you might have about a situation.、Uh, yes, indeed, it is sentimental to use a family recipe at Thanksgiving. It will give it more meaning. Yes, and Ruby adds, after all, Thanksgiving is all about appreciating what we have and sharing with others. So Ruby likes the idea of sharing a recipe or making a dish that comes from a recipe of Ethan's mother, because Thanksgiving is about appreciating other people, appreciating all the things we have in our lives, and sharing those things with other people. So she generally likes the idea of Ethan's suggestion. Okay, and then Ethan says, "Exactly, we should appreciate what we have and share those things with other people." That's the idea behind Thanksgiving. I'm glad you like the idea. In that case, we just need to make sure we can get all the right spices and such. So yes, you need spices for this soup, and then you need some other things. And such here just means etc. etc. And he says, "I can head to the market bright and early tomorrow." 
and pick out the best pumpkin. So yes, bright and early means first thing in the morning. I'm going to go to the market and pick out the best pumpkins, and then we'll bring them home and start preparing the pumpkin soup. And Ruby replies, "Okay, I'll handle the spices and other ingredients so that we can be sure to do justice to your mom's recipe." So Ethan is going to go to the market the next morning to pick out the pumpkin, and Ruby is going to take care of the spices to make sure that they have all the spices they need as well as other ingredients. So. You do need a few spices to make pumpkin soup. First of all, you might need nutmeg, cinnamon. Those are just a few of the spices that you might put in pumpkin soup. Maybe ginger as well. And she wants to pick out all of these spices, make sure that they're available, so that they can do justice to Ethan's mom's recipe. When you do justice to something, you Treat something, or you represent something in a way that it deserves to be treated or represented. For instance, if somebody gives me a really beautiful and expensive piece of cloth, and I use that piece of cloth to have a picnic, and I put it on the ground and it gets all dirty, then I wouldn't be doing justice to that piece of cloth because I would be devaluing its worth. And the fact that somebody gave it to me as an expensive present. Right. So in order to do justice to that piece of cloth, you should make it into a nice dress or something like that. And yes, indeed, they need the best ingredients to do justice to Ethan's mother's recipe. And Ethan says, "Sounds like a plan," which means I agree with you. Let's do it that way. And with any luck. We'll make it a memorable Thanksgiving dinner for everyone in the dorm. With any luck, just means if we're lucky, if things go our way, it will be a memorable Thanksgiving dinner for all the residents in the dorm. Dorm here is just short for dormitory. The dormitory I lived in when I was in university was called Slater Hall, and it was Slater Residence Hall officially, but it was a dorm where people lived, students lived basically. And Ruby says, "Hmm, I can't." Wait to see everyone enjoy the soup, and whatever else we end up making, or whatever we make in the end, like turkey and potato salad or whatever. Okay, that brings us to the end of the first part of our lesson for today. Let's continue their conversation and talk about soups from different cultures. Soups from different cultures. As they cook the pumpkin soup, Ruby and Ethan chat about soups from different parts of the world. Pumpkin soup is such a classic favorite in North America. I guess different parts of the world also have their representative soups, right? Indeed. Have you ever tasted bisque? It's a richly flavored French soup made from lobsters. Yes, it's really delicious. And don't forget miso soup from Japan. The fish and seaweed stock and miso paste give the soup quite a unique flavor. I know. Speaking of which, it seems like Eastern soups are relatively thin, probably because clear broths are frequently used as a base to enhance the natural flavors of the ingredients. Oh right. Whereas Western soups often use cream to achieve a thicker and creamier texture. Exactly. You read my mind. Yeah, that's a really interesting distinction I hadn't thought of before you brought it up. It's fascinating how something as simple as soup can vary so much across different cultures and cuisines. The second part, we see the word seaweed. This word means seaweed or seaweed. For example, a lot of animals living in the ocean eat the seaweed that grows there. Many animals living in the ocean eat the seaweed that grows there. For example, many animals living in the ocean eat the seaweed I usually add dried seaweed to flavor my soup. 我通常会加入干海带来提味我的汤。接下来我们看到单字 enhance， 它是动词，意思是提高、增进或是增加。例如 ，The police officer enhanced the CCTV footage so that the suspect could be seen clearly. 警察提高了监视器影片的画质，好让嫌犯可以清楚的被看见。又或者说。The seasoning enhances the food's flavor. This seasoning 增加了食物的风味。下一个我们看到单字 whereas， 它是介系词，指的是但是或是然而。例如 ，My best friend loves living in the city, whereas I would prefer to move to the countryside. 
我最好的朋友喜欢住在城市，而我更喜欢搬到乡村。又或者说 ，The first plan is riskier, whereas the second plan is safer. 第一个计划的风险较高，然而第二个计划则较安全。接着我们看到单字 creamy， 它是形容词，指的是滑顺细腻的，或是含奶油的、浓郁的。例如 ，The salmon was covered in a creamy sauce. 那块鲑鱼上布满绵密的酱料。又或者说 ，The soup is thick and creamy. It's perfect for a cold winter's day. 这道汤很浓郁且有奶香，很适合寒冷的冬日。最后，我们看到名词 texture， 它是指口感、质地或是手感。例如 ，Fuji apples are known for having a crisp, crunchy texture. 富士苹果以清脆的口感著称。又或者说 ，The texture of the cloth was very smooth. Making it look very beautiful. This clothing material's texture is very smooth. It looks very beautiful. So the second part of the conversation today is titled "Soups from Different Cultures." And as Ethan and Ruby cook the pumpkin soup, they chat about soups from different parts of the world. And Ruby says to Ethan as she is stirring the soup, "Pumpkin soup is such a classic favorite in North America. I guess different parts of the world also have their representative soups, right?" So Ruby is saying that. Pumpkin soup is representative of North America, which means that it's very popular in North America. A lot of people eat it for Thanksgiving and also in the winter and in autumn often. So, in that sense, pumpkin soup is very representative. And she wonders what other types of soup are representative in other parts of the world. Yep,、uh, pumpkin soup is popular in North America, which is the USA and Canada. And Ethan says, "Indeed, have you ever tasted bisque? It's a richly flavored French soup made from lobsters. So that is an example of a soup that is representative of France." And yes, it's made from lobsters. I've never had it myself. I'm from the country in the USA. We don't have things exotic like that. But how about you, Helen? Have you had bisque before? Yes, I've had bisque, and it's quite delicious. It's very creamy, very tasty indeed. And Ruby does say yes, it's really delicious. And don't forget miso soup from Japan. The fish and seaweed stock and miso paste give the soup quite a unique flavor. Yes, miso soup is very popular here in Taiwan, especially at Japanese restaurants. It has fish in it, and it has seaweed stock. Seaweed, of course, refers to plants that grow in the ocean, and stock just refers to the way the seaweed has been treated and made into an ingredient for soup. It's included in a kind of a packet that you buy in the supermarket, and you just squeeze out a little bit and add water to it, and voila, you've got your miso soup. Yes, and miso soup, aside from containing fish and seaweed stock. Also contains miso paste. So miso paste is basically a paste made out of fermented soybeans, and these ingredients give the soup quite a unique flavor. And yes, one can say that miso soup has a unique flavor, a flavor like no other soup. It's salty. It has that umami that many people love, which is created from the fish and seaweed stock as well as from the miso paste. Okay, so Ethan says I. Know- No, I agree with you. It does have a very special, unique flavor. And he says, speaking of which, while we're on the subject, since we're talking about miso, it seems like Eastern soups are relatively thin, probably because clear broths are frequently used as a base to enhance the natural flavors of the ingredients. So he's referring to Eastern soups. Or soups that are made in East Asia, or Asia itself, in China, Japan, Korea, etc. He thinks they're relatively thin. They're not so thick. They're not so much like stew. And he thinks it's because they have these clear broths, and they're used quite often as a base. And those broths enhance the natural flavors of the ingredients. So a broth is like the base liquid of a soup. You need to prepare it first. It might have meat in it or vegetables or whatever. 
and of course it can be quite thin, and they're used as the base of the soup, and they use it because it will bring out or enhance the flavors of those ingredients. Right. A lot of people prepare broth and then they freeze it, and then when they need to make soup, they will take out the broth and、uh, let it defrost and use it to prepare whatever soup they're making. But some people also just drink the broth. They'll drink the broth in a mug in a cup because it's nutritious. Sometimes broths are made with bones, with chicken bones or beef bones. So broth is basically the tasty, clear soup that can be consumed. As is or used to make other types of soup, and these clear broths are frequently used as a base to enhance the natural flavors of the ingredients. To enhance basically means to make something better, to improve something. For instance, if you're trying to look your best for a particular situation, you might want to dress up and put some makeup on to enhance the way you look. Or maybe you took a picture and it's kind of blurry and out of focus. Maybe you can use soft. Where to enhance the image to make it look better, and Ruby says, "All right." Whereas Western soups often use cream to achieve a thicker and creamier texture. So here, whereas just means now. Let's talk about this particular case. One thing is the case, whereas this other thing is a different case. And yes, Western soups often use cream, which is a dairy product, and that makes it thicker and creamier. It gives it a thicker and creamier texture. Creamier just means it has more cream in it than usual, and texture just refers. Refers to how it feels in the mouth, how thick, how thin it is, the general consistency of the soup, and this, of course, leads to the fact that uh, in uh, Western languages we tend to use the word "eat" for soup. I'm going to eat some soup or have some soup. Whereas here in Taiwan and China, you say "he tang" or "drink soup," which we don't use in the West. Right, and the word texture can describe something that you taste with your mouth or something that you touch with your hands. So I could say that this material, this fabric, has a very smooth texture, or that it has a rough texture, which is how it feels when you touch it. But when you talk about food, food can also have either a smooth texture or it could have a hard texture, and that's usually the case. When you are eating, for instance, steak, you can say that the steak has a very rough texture or hard texture, or tough texture, indeed. And Ethan says, "Exactly, you read my mind. You know exactly what I'm thinking." And Ruby says, "Yeah, that's a really interesting distinction. I hadn't thought of before. You brought it up." A distinction, of course, is the difference between something, and of course, they are distinguishing between different types of soups in the East and the West. That is a distinction here, and to bring something up just means to mention something. Usually, it's not、uh, supposed to be mentioned, or maybe nobody thought of it, so somebody brought it up. Oh, I'm glad you brought that up. I'm glad you mentioned that. And she goes on to say, "It's fascinating how something as simple as soup can vary so much across different cultures." And cuisines. A cuisine is a kind of food, and it's usually the fancy word like "let's go have some Hakka cuisine tonight." Right. It's a type of cooking, and it's usually used to refer to the type of cooking of a particular place or a particular culture. You can talk about Hakka cuisine or French cuisine, Italian cuisine. And so, as Ruby and Ethan are preparing their pumpkin soup, they have made references to many different types of soups. Around the world. Okay, that brings us to the end of our discussion for today. Let's listen now to Hanny. Hello, 同学，大家好，我是 Hanny。我们来看今天的文法重点。在课文第一部分的对话里 ，Ruby 和 Ethan 要来负责为宿舍筹划感恩节晚餐。那文中用到这个 dormitory 和 dorm 来指学生宿舍。Dorm 其实就是 dormitory 的简称。那我们这边要来拆解一下 dormitory 这个单字的字根喽。在拉丁文里面呢 ，d o r m i r e 这个部分它表示 to sleep， 也就是睡觉的意思。那所以这个 d o r m 这个字根它就有睡觉
效的语义哦。然后呢 ，o r y 是名词字尾，可以表达什么什么地方或场所。那合在一起 ，dormitory 就是指睡觉的地方，应该就可以联想到它有宿舍的意思了。好，另外补充一个有相同字根的单字是 dormant， d o r m 是睡觉嘛？那么 a n t 是形容词字尾，可以表达什么什么状态的，合在一起 dormant 就是表达休眠的、沉睡的或是暂停活动的。像当我们说 a dormant volcano 就是休火山、休眠火山。好，那在这个段落对话的最后啊 ，Ruby 他提到他迫不及待想看到大家享用他们准备的南瓜汤，以及最终所做出的其他餐点。那文中是用到 whatever else we end up making 来表达最终所做的其他餐点。那么 end up 它表示结果变成，或者是最终处于什么样的状况。特别注意 ，end up 是不及物用法，后面要接补语。那这个补语可以是名词、形容词、现在分词 v i n g， 或者是介系词、片语等等。我们来看两个例句 ：We ended up having instant noodles for dinner。结果啊，我们最后是吃泡面当晚餐。再看个例句 ：Their grandfather had a stroke and ended up in a nursing home。他们的祖父中风，最后是待在疗养院。好，那在课文第二部分的对话里面 ，Ethan 他有说到一句 ，Exactly, you read my mind. 确实如此，你猜到我在想什么了。那么 read one's mind 字面意思是读某人的心，也就是知道某人在想什么。那么如果我们用 mind reader， 则是指看穿他人心思的人。像有人吵架的时候，也许就是说。How am I supposed to know what you're thinking? I'm not a mind reader. 我怎么会知道你在想什么啊？我又不会读心术，对不对？好，那我们也顺便补充一下，如果你是用到 speak one's mind， 则是表达有话直说，坦白说出心里的想法。例如 ，Don't be afraid to speak your mind. 别害怕说出你心里的想法，有话直说吧。好，那以上是今天重点整理，我们回顾今天单词吧。Recipe. I followed my mom's recipe to make some delicious chocolate chip cookies. Sentiment. During the holidays, Jack decorates his home with items that spread a warm and cheerful sentiment. Whereas, Ian prefers to work alone, whereas Lester enjoys working with others. Texture. The ice cream has a smooth and creamy texture that melts on your tongue. Distinction. Since they look almost exactly alike, the main distinctions between the twins are in their personalities. Cuisine. Monique loves trying different cuisines from around the world to experience new flavors. Well, everyone, today's article has come to an end, and I sure hope you enjoy reading along with us. I am Helen. I am Roger. See, See you, you next, next time. time.